Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Father, in your hands we place this evening as we come together to learn your word and enlighten our mind, our hearts, to uh, enlighten my, our mind, our hearts, Lord. And, and uh, we pray that uh, your word may uh, may your word may change our lives and we may pass on this uh, uh, transformation experience with other brothers and sisters. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So today we will... Uh, yeah, we continue with John 10. Yeah, 10, 5 onwards. Yeah. So, uh, just a little bit of recap of what we saw yesterday before we go into. So, when I began John chapter 10, this is what we learned that it's actually immediately after the feast of the Hanukkah or the tabernacles or lights. And one of the things that is read during that feast is Ezekiel chapter 34, where the Lord had already promised. That he's unhappy with the shepherds of Israel because instead of feeding the lambs, they've been feeding themselves. And therefore, God promises that he himself will be the shepherd who will take care of the sheep, especially after the lost ones. And also, we saw the role of the shepherd reflecting on Psalms 23 a bit. Every aspect of it, the role passed on to the priest and the hierarchy of the church today. Mm. And especially we saw about the anointing, mm -hmm. how the chrism oil is anointed. And that's the anointing that the shepherd shared with us in every healing sacrament. Right. Uh, we, we saw that. And then we also were talking about the caution about the false shepherds. Mm -hmm. um, who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate is a thief and a bandit. And we saw how the Lord was cautioning us about false prophets coming in sheep's clothing, inwardly ravenous wolves, how they will mislead us. And now there's a prophecy in the book of Deuteronomy itself about that. Especially mm -hmm. one aspect of that which we really wanted everyone to be cautious is on the second line of this Deuteronomy 18.20. Or who presume to talk in my name a word that I have not commanded. So that was a real danger that we were discussing yesterday. More than people speaking in the name of other gods, which very easily we can identify. But when they speak in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, something that the Lord has not commanded, then people may be led astray. And how we also saw the primary way of leading them away is to show signs and wonders. And we discussed about the importance of not following the signs, but rather the shepherd itself, Jesus Christ, the good shepherd. So, and we also saw this one important word of God in 2 Timothy 4, 3 and 4. Let's read this. Let's start from here now. For the time is coming when people will, be put up, will not put up with sound doctrine. So this is what we discussed in a little detail yesterday. That people will be more interested in hearing something that is pleasing to them rather than the truth itself. <clears throat> Today, that's one of the dangers. Um, something that people will be attracted is something that they will be more comfortable with. And there is a tendency of people also to preach to the galleries, something that the audience will accept rather than the truth itself. And it says, but having itching ears, they have accumulated for themselves teachers to suit their own desire and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander in myths. So the Lord is cautioning about all these things and rather the best way to avoid all these things is to cling on to the good shepherd, Jesus Christ. And through him, when we receive every graces, we will not stray. Okay, with this we will go into what we will learn today. You know, and he also said, I know them by name. Very clearly, the Lord says, he will know every sheep by name. That's something beautiful for every one of us. In fact, you know, every day virtually we meet here. Um, 
all of you know my name all of you know know the name of jose but frankly how many people do we know by name hardly any no very few people but dear god says he knows everyone by name everyone by name that is he is saying he has an individual attention eye on every one of us that's something beautiful i say of 431 we all know this very uh, popular word of god but now thus says the lord he who created you o jacob he who formed you o israel do not fear for i have redeemed you I have called you by name you are mine look the lord says he is redeemed each one of us and he has called us individually by name individual name that's what jesus is relating to the good shepherd he says the true identity of a good shepherd is knowing each sheep by name when we say knowing by name it is just not the name that we have he knows our nature he knows our weaknesses he knows our needs he knows the situation we are in and that's the beauty of a good shepherd good shepherd hmm. you know in isaiah 49:16 there's a beautiful word of god see i have inscribed you on the palm of my hands your ways are continuously before me see when we spoke about the prophet isaiah speaks the lord has inscribed our names on his hand hmm. what do you mean by that jos names inscribed on the hand uh, as you said you know he we will he will know us uh, in and out every uh, see remember in 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 our childhood days you know we have all done that i think you also would have done that something important we write in our hands right right yeah <laughs> why it's always there easy to access right so that's exactly what he means by that he's our names are always there mm. it also means that god will never forget us Mm-hmm. Jos will God ever forget us? No, he will not. There is one way he can forget you and me. Yeah. Okay. Want to know that? Yeah. I'll read Psalms 137:5. One. If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand wither. So, if somebody has the guts to cut off the right hand of God, uh. then he will forget us. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's only an uh, it's an imaginary situation. I'm yeah. telling you. So, what does it mean? He says only if my hand is cut off will i forget you mm. that means yeah. god is saying he'll never forget us that's what it means by that in fact okay. somebody uh, mentioned uh, you know some, i was just having a conversation with someone who told me that you know god's love is god loves an in a person like this as you are the only one whom he has created in the whole world nobody else absolutely no, true you are the only one in the whole world and no one else is there and that is the way he loves you so very if you if you have to just, if you can visualize that uh, you know it will give us a lot of comfort uh, in our relationship with god i i will just add on to what you said jos mm. you give a child a small child mm. a box of chocolate mm. maybe 10 chocolates in that right the child will relish it eat it mm. but when it comes to the last chocolate mm. the way the child will hold on to that yes yes yeah we all done that okay Absolutely. i can i can see that uh, three of them doing it every day every day ah, okay <laughs> <laughs> they hide it they hide it you know sometimes when you have only one chocolate they you know they bring come with a scale and the knife <laughs> to measure and give yeah, <laughs> give yeah. yeah so that the yeah, that precious it is yeah so that precious it is uh, you know but then we don't understand that and why we don't understand because we don't put the effort to understand god uh, also because we don't have that kind of a relationship with god as he has with us right that's also a problem you know yeah. in order to value that we should have a, at least some level of relationship with him mm. that is what the difference is it may vary from person to person that's Correct. exactly so, what it is yeah so to have that relationship with a, with anybody for that matter the first step i guess is to know him mm. to know him and know him how do we know him one or the best way is to know to read his word that is uh, the best way to understand god otherwise uh, you will not know god you cannot just uh, you know focus upon you know something else or on your prayer to know god you know, god will be known through his word Yes, that's the primary way. That's what yeah. all this effort is about. And, you know? and his prayers will uh, will 
compliment that it, it's not prayers uh, you know right that is how i understand because for to know god is through his word that's true because see um, human being is also an uh, intellectual being in the sense mm. we need reasoning mm. without that you say god nobody is going to understand. only when you read that's the reason you know, as we have been insisting and telling that learning the word of god is important it's not for an intellectual knowledge especially these times you know yes with these times because uh, you know each season if you really look at our great grandfathers probably they may not have they might not have even read i don't know whether they would have read the bible <laughs> but then for them the season during that time the, the the you know the times were different the seasons were different god's uh, mercy uh, the way people were people were dealt were different Uh, at the time i don't know whether bible was the bible was there at all in the sense as much as it is available now i don't know whether the bible was there do you have some thought no, Joe, so only in, uh, only with the second vatican it was you know uh, made yeah. available for the laity hmm. so how did they come to how did they lead a holy life how did they you know uh, get into the relationship uh, See, that is the grace given by god hmm. no that's a god given grace so there the god knows how to sustain you and me the right. only difference is responding to it right. responding to it mm. you know today in the world there are people when you tell them something they believe it others mm. need proof of it right. some need experience of it right so different levels that's okay that's nothing wrong in that nothing wrong in that but god will provide all these things a genuine need of yours if god knows only through experience you are going to come to him he will provide that experience mm. but how we respond to that is the difference between people mm-hmm. that's exactly because see it's a nature of us and god knows it right. so there are some people they know they need to have enough proof of that some people only if they read in the scripture something about it they will believe it mm-hmm. we are not saying that is wrong or something that is their way of understanding and god will provide a way there right but then when you know it what are you going to do mm. for example when we are reflecting on um, john chapter 9 jesus gave a clear example to them but, but then they went into something else right because they don't want to their idea is to we don't want the truth we only want to find fault mm. that's a difference here you know i take the example of thomas here mm. what is the problem in john 20 we will be coming to that later right we know this incident of jesus appearing to the apostles when then thomas was not there right and he showed himself to them and when they told thomas thomas did not believe it and what did thomas tell jesus unless i see the marks on his hand can we read that john john 20 25 john 20 yeah john chapter 20 verse 25 onwards Yeah. So the other disciples told him, "We have seen the Lord," but he said to them, "Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails and place my finger in the mark of the nails and place my hand in his side, I will not believe." Okay. Thomas says two things here. He says, "I need to." see the marks on his hand and i need to place my finger in that wounds two very important things are mentioned here hmm. one he has to see another one he has to place put his fingers in that wounds only then he says he will believe it right. yeah to g play <laughs> i don't know who that is right. okay and uh, jos Now, can you continue reading that? Eight days later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. The doors were shut, but Jesus came and stood among them and said, "Peace be with you." Then he said to Thomas, "Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not be faithless, but believing." Thomas hmm. answered, "My Lord and my God." Okay, hold on there, Jesus. Right. So Thomas wanted to see and put his fingers there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now Jesus told him, "Come see and put your hand here." Okay. Mm. But did Thomas put his hand there? No. No. Of course he must have seen because it was shown. 
Yeah. Yeah. And why did he say? He said, "I must put my finger only, then I'll believe it." Yeah. Yeah. And without putting his finger, how did he believe? I don't know. This is not recorded in the Bible. It's my own interpretation. It's my very own personal interpretation. Okay. Uh-huh. Thomas saw. No. What must have he seen in the hands of God? He would have seen the finger, uh, a nail print. In addition to that, I feel the spiritual aspect of it, he must have seen his name written there. Mm, yeah, could be. Because the Bible says your name is written on my hands. Mm. This is my own, you know, inspiration which I got. Yes, probably could be. Could be, yeah, yeah. So it is like this. See, see. Sometimes, uh, even though <laughs> when people when people say this uh, uh, out of uh, their, uh, you know, emotions, mm. but when it actually comes in, you will be, you will not. you will not want to do exactly what you said you wanted to just uh, you know you might be awestruck or wonderstruck by the by the uh, actual uh, happening of what you see yes so you claim to you when do you claim to uh, you know you wanted to know it but then when it really happens it you will be completely uh, you know uh, out of the whole thing of you do not insist on what you exactly said That's true. That part, when we come to John twenty, we'll meditate a little bit. What mm. is the reason for Thomas to ask that? Okay. okay. Some many people call Thomas as doubting Thomas. Mm. Well, many people disagree on that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Anyway, we'll come to that there. But what I'm trying to tell you is, he says, "Your hand, oh, your name is written and inscribed on my hands." Mm. Probably that's what Thomas would have seen in spirit. I'm telling you, not physically. And that's what is important. And that is how. god is referring to himself as a shepherd who knows each one of us by name and that's exactly what i'm trying to tell here yeah so in, also- fact, in fact on that line there is one verse which really uh, you know uh, which really helps me to uh, understand the this particular aspect of knowing god knowing uh, you so deep is the psalm Hundred and thirty-three or hundred and twenty-seven, where the where the word of God says, right? Every thought of your uh, thought oh, yes. uh, mm. is uh, known. When I sit down, when I speak, when I walk. One thirty-nine. One thirty-nine. Yeah, one thirty-nine. Psalm one thirty-nine. Yes. Uh, yeah. I know you're sitting down. I know you're sitting. Uh. Yeah, which is uh, which uh, apparently, and I have a you know an experience related to that, which I don't want to share right now. but that uh, that was very very uh, deep uh, you know a deep experience for me you know the word is so clear though i know us when i sit down and when i ri- rise up the thoughts that he discerned the, my thoughts from far afar and not only even before a word is on my lip lord you know it yeah, completely you know completely so that actually you know if you meditate upon that and then you know that was a very that's a that is that is one word which are really uh, you know helped me to understand understand this particular aspect of god knowing everything you know in our lives but the problem problem is that we we forget everything you know we forget so quickly that god knows everything and you know god is on you know is with us that is the that is the challenge it is not about god uh, you know not god not being with us but it is we not being with god that's true that's exactly what happened in the garden of eden is adam who went and hid himself adam went and said now when we continue on passage 5 there's one more word there who is the gatekeeper he says the gatekeeper knows and opens the door for the shepherd who is the gatekeeper jesus is the gatekeeper no he is the shepherd oh in that in this verse i'm talking about okay in this verse very important see in mark 13 34 we read like this it's like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge each is work and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch so god is talking about a doorkeeper or a gatekeeper here it is not the shepherd jesus christ who is the doorkeeper gatekeeper in order to understand this let's go to this beautiful uh, parable of the good samaritan in luke chapter 10 we are all aware of this good samaritan parable everybody knows that now what happens there when this good samaritan samaritan carries this wounded traveler what does he do jos uh, he would he he went to he went to the inn and uh... yeah. the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper and said 
Mm. Take care of him. When I when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Look at this beautiful year. The good Samaritan, who is represented by Jesus Christ, yeah, in this parable, the wounded traveler, all of us. Mm. So we meditate on these two characters, but often we miss this innkeeper or the doorkeeper, whatever we call it. Mm. Look, the good Samaritan is taking him to the innkeeper and telling him, "You take care of him there." Mm. Till I come back, mm. and when I come back, I will repay you. So, where is the good Samaritan going to come back, Jos? Where is he going to come back? Ah, huh. to the inn. To the inn. Mm. If the wounded traveler is not there in the inn, he will not know where he is. Yes. Mm. So he has to be there in the inn, under the care of the innkeeper. Do you agree with me? Yeah. Okay, and we also have the two dinaris there. Okay, we'll come to that maybe. Now, who is the innkeeper? Matthew eighteen eighteen. Mm. I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So, who is the innkeeper? The Holy Catholic Church. Mm. It's the inn. Mm. So, Jesus, till he comes back, he's given you and me in charge of the church. Mm. We are under the care of the inn. In the inn, the church, under the care of the Holy Father, the hierarchy of the church, mm. they are the one to take care of us. Mm. That's what he says. And what are the two dinari he gave them? The sacrament. The magisterial teaching, which includes the sacraments. Okay, and the other one is the word of God. Mm. So, with the word of God and the magisterial teaching of the church, which includes the sacraments. It's enough for us to sustain here mm. till he comes back. You know, okay, that's another beautiful explanation about the Good Samaritan. But what I want to tell you is, the innkeeper is the church for you and me, mm. the guardian of the church, mm. and says the innkeeper knows my voice and open it. Therefore, this is the innkeeper we are talking about here, doorkeeper, the church. Mm. And Jesus told them also, the doorkeeper will know that we are in charge of that. He will let us in. We have to be that. Now, when you come back here, when he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. We'll come to that voice part a little later. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of a strangers. Okay, this is something very interesting here. Interesting here. Now the Bible says. They know the voice of the shepherd, and not the voice of the stranger. So, who know makes us and know the voice, Jose? Who makes us know the voice of the shepherd? The shepherd. No, no, the shepherd. No, let's read it once again. The sheep follow him because they know his voice. Correct. They will for not follow a stranger. But they will run from him because they do not know the voice of a stranger. Who helps us in distinguish between the voice of the shepherd and the voice of a stranger? The, 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 the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Mm. That's what remember Jesus said in John fourteen. Mm. The Holy Spirit will teach you and guide you into all the truth. Mm. He will reveal everything to you. Right. So it is the Holy Spirit that will make us this thing. Now. This makes sense when we come to the false teachings. Mm. If you are really led by the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit will make you identify the voice of the shepherd. Yeah, it will make us know what is the voice of the shepherd and what is the voice of the enemy. Remember, this problem started in the Garden of Eden. Mm. There was the voice of God telling them, "Don't eat from the tree." There was the voice of the enemy. They had a choice there. The problem, the problem uh, today's world is, everybody says that they have the Holy Spirit. Everybody yeah, says, but, everybody uh, says uh, this is the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, um, revealing Holy Spirit saying, so that understanding whether the which is the correct uh, message for you from God is where they struggle for a lot of a lot of people. There's only one solution. Yes, to your job, absolutely right. But what is the solution for that? There's only one solution for that. Yes, you develop that intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit. No. Yeah, yeah. 
that's the you know, solution for that solution, yeah. see i cannot find fault with another person who says and speak by the spirit and say oh he said holy spirit but it was not later only i came to know yes it's happening i'm not saying no but how to solve this problem if you are led by the spirit of god if you are sensitive to the promptings of the spirit you will be able to distinguish mm. you'll be able to distinguish it yeah. and that is what we need to develop with our prayer and reading the word of god all that Mm-hmm. our relationship you build your relationship with the holy spirit so that you don't have to worry about you will know what is right and what is wrong today yeah that is what many people don't want to do it and they wanted we all wanted shortcut <laughs> yes so i don't want to spend time in prayer and develop the relationship let somebody do it and give the benefit of it to me <laughs> yeah yeah that is where the problem is you rightly said that yeah and then then you cannot blame you know anybody for that you have to be blamed for that right and also you wanted to choose what is what suits you what you like ah that is what we read no yeah. something that is pleasing to them yeah, yeah. when you are when you, you are sensitive to the spirit you yeah. will not be wanting to listen what you want to mm. you know, even in counseling sessions have been that when we tell them something that is true the real true message from god if it is not according to their liking they will go to another counselor mm. jump from one to another until they get what they want to hear mm. that's a problem with this you know with all of us today that's a problem in john 15 19 he said you do not belong to the world but i've chosen you out of the world so if he has chosen us out of the world we need to understand the language of god we need to understand the you know uh, the voice of the shepherd we are living in the world but we are chosen out of it we must remember that very clearly mm. i cannot live according to the standards of the world mm. and claim to be a child of god remember is it if we have to live in the world but not according to the standards of the world mm. very important very important my dear friends that's something we need to be very sensitive to okay now he says they know my voice what is that you know in bethlehem there was the sheep feeds lot of you know flocks will be coming there different mm. flocks together mm. and they will all be in you know, groups they'll be gazing here and there the shepherds will be there in the night time because they will come from different villages so they don't go back to their own towns and you know? all so they have this you know huge places covered with gates where they put all the sheep in okay in the night and the shepherds will be sitting around sleeping around that okay the sheep will all be there inside mingling with one another Mm. in the morning each shepherd will make their own noise and his sheep will come out oh that's exactly no this is the uh, clear idea with jesus speaks you know when jesus speaks these languages he always uses the day to day life of the people so which means uh, which means uh, the uh, though, so your sheep my sheep everybody sheep will all be staying together Yes, they'll all be put on together there. The morning, the night. when I call my sheep. Yeah, one will make yeah. some noise. They'll make, and they'll yeah. know that and come. Okay, so those sheep will come. Oh, that is very. Yes, good. yes, that's that exactly what. Context. That is the context in which Jesus said. Yes, and, they uh, hear the voice. They know my voice. That is a beautiful. And that's the truth. That's how it was happen. Hmm. Ah, right. Not only that. No, even I've seen that. You know, there are some stray dogs outside my house. they are mm. somewhere here and all morning i just going to want to feed them i make some small noise you know they hear that and they come from wherever they are <laughs> <laughs> okay that's a truth that's a truth they know that they know see how sensitive they are mm. being animals how sensitive they are are we as sensitive like them that's the question we need to answer ourselves mm. that's exactly you know they know the voice they will not come out for any other sound mm. look at the keenness and that's what jesus is asking us to learn from today mm-hmm. learn from the sheep how the shepherd calls them i am also calling you are we sensitive to the voice of my maker mm-hmm. when we are sensitive we will not be worried about oh i got the wrong message from this prophet i got the wrong message from this counselor that priest told me something did not happen we will not go astray jews mm-hmm. Yes, I'm not saying God does not speak through people. What I'm saying is, when we are sensitive, even when somebody gives you a message, you will know whether that is from God or not. Mm. You will know that definitely. You will know that. Mm. 
if you are sensitive god need not speak to you directly he can speak through someone yeah or whether that someone is correct or not you can identify right that's where we need to be you know train ourselves to be sensitive to the promptings of the spirit mm. very important very important yeah, like paul when he was in that uh, philippi that uh, you know girl with the evil spirit telling him i know who you are the holy one of god men of the most high she was telling all the truth mm. but paul was sensitive this is not the voice of my shepherd mm. and he said her keep mm. see that's the sensitiveness even when the truth is said he knows the truth is coming from a person who is not the truth mm. that's the sensitiveness we are talking about here and that's what jesus is teaching us through this beautiful relationship between sheep sheep and shepherd something that we need to keep in very much in touch with mm. okay look at this now was 6 and 8 jesus used this figure of speech with them Mm. but they did not understand what he was saying to them so again jesus said to them very truly t- i tell you i am the gate of the sheep all who come before me are thieves and bandits but the sheep did not listen to them thieves and bandits here okay john chapter 9 and 10 i am the gate who enters by me will be saved uh, this part i explained to you when i spoke about the eucharist the door the gate remember that yeah yeah flood on the gate i told that now and will come in and go out and find pasture the thief comes only to steal kill and destroy i came that they may have life and have it abundantly okay jos we two words are used here thieves and bandits who's the thief thief is uh, who is it simple as that oh okay thief no thief he comes only to remember the tree of knowledge leading to death in the tree of life there mm. he came to steal that life from man mm. in the garden to destroy it yes yeah. we know the thief we know about the thief yeah okay. uh, we'll come to the john chapter 10 was 11 and 12 i am the good shepherd we are coming to this point jos what you told me yesterday mm. i am the good shepherd yeah the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep mm. the hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep Mm-hmm. sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away and the wolf snatches them and scatters them okay he is using the very normal terminology here yeah. who is the hired hand we know the thief the bandit yeah. who is the hired hand who is the hired hand so first he spoke about the thief right. okay and we know who is the thief is satan murderer yeah he comes only to kill we know he is a murderer yeah john 8 we read that he is a murderer yeah who is the hired hand remember he is talking this to the jewish people yes mm. the hired hand is nothing but the foreign rulers of israel they have so much of foreign rulers mm. who did not really care for them but they only wanted the authority mm. so he is referring to the hired hand as the foreign rulers of israel so in this current context uh, how do you connect in the current context we can one is the thief satan Uh-huh. and one is a so called people as you rightly said the false prophets mm. you know they are the, and also we can say the people who are in charge of us mm. if they are not led by the spirit of god they will live when a problem comes mm. i don't want to explain this further because it will become a little controversial <laughs> okay mm. <laughs> but anyway i'll you know there are people who are in charge of us who are not led by the spirit of god Mm. so when what happens they when things are all right things will be okay with you but when a problem comes they are nowhere for us mm. okay um okay and uh, this point we we'll leave it just because it will become a little bit of a thing maybe i'll just tell you later also mm. okay okay now let's move on to 13 and 16 the higher hand runs away because the higher hand does not care for the sheep or oh, this will give you an idea just mm. somebody who does not care for the sheep right now uh, just to make it very brief today so many people want to church, start a church mm. what happens there you know when problem comes are they there for them mm. you need to think about it i am the good shepherd i know my own and my own know me 
just as the father knows me and i know the father and i laid on my life for the sheep i have other sheep that do not belong to this fold i must bring them also that they will listen to my voice so there will be one flock one shepherd okay this will give you an answer for the earlier question jos mm. i have other sheep that do not belong to this fold i must bring them also and they will listen to my voice so that there will be one flock and one shepherd mm. this is what the lord established in the beginning yeah one church to be uh this you know this everything is broken now mm. that's exactly what god is saying you no know, they have to i have to bring everybody under one roof mm. that's the role of the shepherd okay this part we know what we are referring to today mm. many people so people straying away starting their own churches the denomination ones you know i i remember a person was explaining this to me some years back okay mm. explaining this in a talk and he was telling like this he was giving an example how today satan has tricked the mind of people he's put them in all in batches oh mm. these are all pentecostal sheep these mm. are catholic sheep these are some you know, csi sheep these are the bonagate sheep new age sheep you know they put them like this okay the sheep are not the problem for that mm. people have done that then he was talking but on the last day there's going to be a mighty rain of the holy spirit mm. okay the latter rain as he calls it so he was explaining like this he says suppose all of them are kept and they're all in fences they're not able to come mingle with each other but a heavy rain comes in comes in comes in comes in the waters raise up raise up raise up and all these fences are submerged inside okay mm. now these sheep have no fence to divide them Mm. so they're all mingling with each other mm. and that's how it's going to be when the latter rain comes and the lord when he pours off the holy spirit all these will come under one sheep and one shepherd mm. and that's very important for you and me to understand this right today we have so many divisions and so many denominations and so many things but it's not the desire of god he wants us to be one one church right. because he established one church remember that right because 1500 years was only this catholic church right then it all divided divided but that's why the shepherd's role is also to unite everything back together yeah and jesus the good shepherd is working for that in fact we pope, all pope francis is a uh, is uh, heavily uh, on that mission of uh, yes because he's the appointed shepherd no yeah yeah officially appointed by the lord mm. so he has to work for that mm. that's true Right. Okay, you got that point, and that's the hired hand I was talking about also. Mm-hmm. So you said the Pope is working because he's the real hand, right? But someone who's hired and not reform, he will they will run away when all these problems comes. Right. Okay, you got the answer for that also now. Right, right. Okay, uh, John ten seventy to eighteen says, for this reason, the Father loves me because I laid on my life in order to take it up again. Mm. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my father. Okay, he's talking about his death and resurrection. Okay. How he is going to save us? He is going to save the sheep by his passion death and resurrection. And that's exactly what he is foretelling here in this. These are all very direct statements which don't need much of explanation, mm. but still I'm telling you these things. What is 1921? Again the Jews were divided because of these words. Mm. many of them were saying he has a demon and is out of his mind why listen to him mm. others were saying these are not the words of the one who has a demon can a demon open the eye of the blind so remember they are very close to that healing incident of that blind man okay again there is a division mm. what happens here at that time the festival of the dedication took place in jerusalem it was winter and jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of solomon so the jews gathered around him and said to him how long will you keep us in suspense if you are the messiah please tell us plainly so now they are coming to that conclusion at least mm. okay fine you are keeping us in suspense see this is the people who are believing now not the one who are not believing mm. we need to keep that in mind the people who are believing this are coming to this conclusion 
and still they have an element of doubt in them and they are asking him very clearly why don't you tell us okay and there's nothing to read between here it's a very direct thing jesus answered i have told you and you do not believe the works that i do in my father's name testify to me but you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep so which means uh, jesus has told them that he is a messiah yeah i we saw that in chapter 9 no chapter 8 and 9 remember chapter 8 at the end i told that he told them i am the father of one i have come all that but still that no it's it's like this because they somehow want something that is pleasing to them mm. they want him to say that i am not the messiah mm. remember it happened with john the baptist mm. the moment he said they know i am not the messiah they did not trouble him right of course it was another uh, incident that he had to die more mm. because of herod and herodias you know mm. and salome and not because of these pharisees actually mm. the moment he said i am not the messiah they left him alone yeah that's exactly what they want here mm. he told them in chapter 8 very clearly we saw that mm. and now they are again they are why are they asking again and again again and again mm. like your son comes and asks you for a bar of chocolate you said i don't buy it for you okay again he'll come and ask you daddy can you buy me a chocolate mm. again again why is he asking you again and again jos because he wants it. finally he wants you to change your statement right that's the reason yes mm. that's exactly what is happening here and that's what jesus told you want to hear something that is pleasing to you mm. you're not worried about the sound doctrine no he told that that's exactly what is happening today all this this is still happening in a different context within the faith mm. within the faith this is happening today mm. here it is a matter of faith but today when you apply it within our own faith is it not happening something that we want to hear mm. only when we hear something this father is good that preacher is good why do we say that because that person said something that is pleasing to me which i want to hear he told that mm. so i am happy i'm saying he's a good preacher mm. the other person told something which i am not you know which i don't want to hear so he's not a good preacher mm. my question is if anybody is preaching the word of god they are doing that mm. only if they are preaching something contradicting the word of god or confusing the word of god then it's a matter of doubt yeah and why do we say these things today because we want to know something we want to hear what we want to hear only what we want to hear yeah in fact uh, today i was listening to this father daniel he was also saying today majority of the preaching also are uh, centered around uh, what uh, what uh, you know pleases people ah that's what i mentioned in the beginning I'm preaching to the gallery gallery yes no. because uh, that uh, that is very dangerous uh, uh, you know is what he says because mm-hmm. nobody i wanted to displease uh, the audience and uh, that will actually that is diluting the uh, truth yes today if i preach about healing and deliverance and financial blessing so many people will be very happy absolutely but when you preach on sin and repentance and something like truth like this mm. people think oh what is this here every time we go we are hearing this mm. you will hear it because that's the voice of god mm. even to the last book in the bible he talks about repentance mm. in all the apparitions were mother mary's apparitions the message is repentance right then why are we should, why should we not preach about it my question is that mm. and conditions yeah every promise is there but we look at a condition Mm. yeah in fact uh, on this context uh, i wanted to you know just to invite uh, those people who are in, who are interested i just wanted to use the word interested because this uh, particular uh, you know at our one of our great friend who has been a mentor to happy families uh, brother edmund antavo from goa he uh, has a very interesting message that he has given uh, last week <coughs> i told you you know sir ago 
Mm-hmm. The same message is repeated on uh, on uh, Sunday, coming Sunday. So if anybody is uh, if anybody is interested in this uh, to hear this message, let me know. I will send you the uh, uh, Zoom link. Uh, he's repeating the same message. It is very relevant in the current context. He is uh, clubbing uh, various prophecies, especially the prophecy of Fatima, and uh, how the things are unfolding. So you know many uh, many other uh, prophecies also prophecy of Garbandal, Mejigure, uh, Fatima. Uh, all talks about uh, the signs of times and uh, uh, more than the signs of times the preparation that is required for us to face and face the coming uh, months coming years especially for god's children because uh, one one big message in this entire uh, you know scheme of things is that even the select will also be uh, you know uh, will be shaken so there is absolutely uh, no uh, not i would not say no guarantee but it's going to be challenging for the people who are in the faith to get uh, you know carried away by the things happening in the world so it's very important for us to understand to know what is happening and to discern the truth and to be aware of it and be prepared otherwise uh, you know the way things are happening in the world can really uh, get uh, us also carried away and uh, we we could uh, lose uh, uh, you know we could stray away from the truth so if, if you are interested please as i don't want to put it in this group if you are interested i will forward that link uh, individually to your uh, whatsapp group uh, whatsapp number please uh, unicast me yeah yes that's true jos that's what i'm doing no that's what i'm trying to tell when we study the word of god we preach what is the truth here every word every little thing it's easy to preach what is pleasing to the crowd correct 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 very easy i can say oh no don't worry everything will be all right you'll be blessed you'll be blessed you'll happen don't worry you trust the word of god says word of god see often we forget the condition that is put in the word of god right we stick on to the promises mm. for example i'm just giving you one example okay right. we know this uh, promise of uh, philippines 419 Yeah? Correct, correct. What is that, Joe? Everybody knows it by heart. Hmm. What is that? My Lord, everybody, all my need, God in His riches. So everybody will preach that. But have we read the full passage there? Can we just try that, Joe? Just since we are on this topic, can I go there for a minute? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Can you read from verses ten onwards? Philippians four ten. Uh, I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You are indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I complained of want, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be con- content. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound in in any and all circumstances. I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger. abundance and want i can do all things in him who so strengthens me now look at this jose i'll read from the nrsv version also huh? yeah yeah, so yeah, really, yeah. Really, it's it's more seeing there yeah. okay philippians 4 10 onwards i'll read for you it says like this i rejoice greatly that now at last you have re- revived your concern for me indeed you were concerned for me but had no opportunity to show it not that i am referring to being in need for i have learned to be content with whatever i have mm. i know what it is to have little and i know what it is to have in plenty mm. in any and all circumstances i have learned the secret of being well fed and of going hungry for having plenty and of being need mm. then he goes on to say you know my god shall supply all my needs so he says i have learned to be content with whatever god gives me i have learned to live in hunger to live in plenty mm. and therefore with confidence he says whatever is my need my god will provide mm. so without these things if i say my god shall supply all my needs according to his riches without being content mm. god will look for a contentment right is it my need or is it my greed mm. there's a difference right 
we need that's what these conditions are forgotten almost right another important word of god which people always claim is 1 peter 2:24 mm. oh by his wounds any sickness by the wounds of jesus you're healed does anybody know what the real word of god says there we we'll read that jos don't worry yeah. yeah. 1 peter 2:24 because i'm just telling you how we miss something important looking only what is favorable for you and me mm. he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and to live and live to righteousness by his wounds you have been healed so by the wounds to be healed what are the two things uh, jos might die One, to sin die to sin and live, live to in right. righteousness right if i don't preach do these two things yeah. and i preach only the stripes of jesus you jesus you are healed mm. nothing will happen yeah correct absolutely right nothing will happen right right i have to preach that you have to die for your sins you have to live in righteousness then, then by what right. jesus did on the cross you will be healed correct absolutely when i say this people will not want to listen to that mm. they don't want to live in lie die to sin mm. they don't want to live in righteousness but they are happy to hear oh by the stripes of jesus you are healed mm. so this is exactly what father daniel was referring to i think yeah 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 absolutely that's true Uh, and that's exactly what we need to do mm. today that's what that's exactly what jesus says here the voice of god is very clear don't be selective in hearing the voice of god mm. it's easy for me to listen to what is pleasing to me that's i am not blaming only the people but we has the people who are doing the ministry preaching we have to proclaim that yeah right if i preach only 1 peter 224 by stripes of heal i may have thousands of people listening to me right if i were to preach on die to sin and righteousness i won't even have 100 people listening mm. Mm. but that's a truth mm. so am i trying to dilute the word of god for the sake of the number of audience yeah that's what makes the difference right you see when we are preaching the truth the number of people listening will definitely be less right i'm not saying the others are not preaching the truth mm. but only half the truth something that is more pleasing mm. why yeah, yeah. Right. the another another thing is also how you put it across see sometimes uh, sometimes uh, you know there was there was uh, there were times i was told i don't i have not had a i have not had any uh, personal any experience of it because it was it probably could have happened in the 70s you know 70s 80s there was this uh, you know pre- retreat preaching where it was more of uh, it was very i would say um, threatening and uh, you know will make you scared you know uh, that uh, that approach was there uh, in the church uh, by one group of people where you know that sin 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 that is created kind of a fear kind of a thing in the minds of people where uh, you know that extreme extreme preaching no yeah that's also wrong see that's also wrong we yeah. have to make them aware of the sin yeah but not threaten them depend on the mercy of god correct correct yeah So, so that uh, that was also a, uh, that was also there during that time which i was told uh well, so, such things are there even today some some here and there is there mm. you are a sinner you go to you do this you know that yeah yeah See, that's because mm. i'll tell you jos oh, so it's okay fine we can go to that uh, isaiah if you take the prophet isaiah mm. the first five chapters mm. what was isaiah doing correct what what to you, you sinners you people you, you are like that you are like that what to you uh-huh. but then what happened in the year uziah died yeah the god's presence was not there because of sin of uziah mm. god's presence came back to the temple isaiah saw the temple god's presence in the temple then he says i am a sinful man right his preaching changes right so that's that's what no you should have an experience and then preach if you're going to when you're preaching it's not the question of finding fault mm. i always call that no difference between john the baptist and jesus preaching 
Mm-hmm. You brood of vipers, acts as the root. Mm-hmm. John the Baptist style. Mm-hmm. Jesus also never compromised on sin. But what did he say? Mm-hmm. He only said, "Repent and come back. The love of the Father will take care of that." Mm-hmm. So that's very important to know that. Very important to know that. So that's how. That's what I am trying to talk about here. Right. You know, John fifteen twenty three twenty four says, "Who hates me hates my Father also." Mm-hmm. If I have down done among them the works that no one else did, they would not have sinned. But now that they have seen and hated both me and my father, he goes on to say, you know, the works that he is doing testifies about his relationship with the father. No need to speak about it. That's exactly what he's telling them. Verse twenty-seven to thirty: My sheep hear my voice; I know them, for they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. no one will snatch them out of my hand what my father has given me is greater than all else no one can snatch it out of the father's hand nobody can take us away from the hand of god mm. but then you may wonder is that means we are safe always mm. nobody can snatch you away jose Mm. but you can wander away mm. you can stray away right book 15 is that only you know mm. we have the example of the prodigal son and even the lost sheep for that matter mm. you know i always wonder this book 15 is about the lost and found mm. why three parables for that would one parable be sufficient about the lost and found for each a different the first parable what is the mistake there whose mistake is that the shepherd's mistake or the sheep's mistake neither the sheep unknowingly wandered away unknowingly maybe seeing some greener pasture unknowingly in the second parable the lost coin It was the owner's mistake. He was not careful. Yeah, it was the yeah. owner's mistake. So sometimes, because of the mistake of somebody whom we are under, we may be lost. Mm-hmm. It may not be your fault. Mm-hmm. In the third case, it was entirely the son's mistake. Mm-hmm. So it can happen in my life also. Unknowingly, we may wander away. Mm-hmm. We may be lost because of somebody else's mistake, mm-hmm. or I may rebel against God and walk away. Mm. that's why jesus put three parables there mm. where do we fit into today we need to examine mm. but as he said nobody i cannot say oh somebody snatched me away from god's hand no mm. jesus is clear nobody can snatch us away mm. but only way we can be lost is when i stray away mm. when i stray away see in the garden of eden Satan did not come and pluck evil out of the garden. Mm. He could not do that. He cannot touch. Mm. But Eve was you no. Know, from outside, he was telling all this. Eve wandered away. Adam and Eve wandered away. Mm. That's what Jesus is telling here about the sheep and the shepherd. So that's the guarantee he's giving you. Mm. Nobody will be snatched away. But you take care as that you don't go away from my sheep fold. Okay, uh, this part. Uh, shall I? Maybe I can take a few, five, ten minutes and finish this, Jos. Yeah, 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 sure. Okay, okay. This is a summary of it. Till now, what I said. Okay, there's little more part of uh, John ten. We'll come to that tomorrow. A summary of it. What I what I taught you. Okay, it's like a teaching I'm giving, uh, preaching I'm giving here. What does Jesus the Shepherd do? Okay, I'm just giving you only points here. Number one, he seeks the Lord sheep. Number one. This is to summarize what we learned in the first twenty-seven verses. What does Jesus the Shepherd do? He seeks the lost sheep. Mm. One word of God I give for everything. Ezekiel thirty-four, eleven and twelve. But thus says the Lord God: I myself will search for my sheep, and will seek them out, as shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among the scattered. So I will seek out my sheep. So the first thing the shepherd will do: he will seek you and me out. Mm. Number two. He will carry them, mm. carry them. Luke fifteen four. When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. Mm. 
Isaiah 53:4 also says, "Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases." That's the second thing the shepherd will do. One Peter five seven: Cast all your anxieties on because he cares for you, so he will carry us. Point number three: He will lead them. Mm. He will. Lead, he himself will lead them. John 10:3 and 4. Mm. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out his own, he goes ahead of them. and the sheep know him because they know his voice so third thing the shepherd will do is he will lead us right psalm 23:3 he restores me he leads me in the right path okay mm. point number 4 he opens the gate for the sheep mm. gate means what okay we we'll read one word of god john 10:3 the gatekeeper opens the gate for him mm. john 10:9 i am the gate who enters by me will be saved and find out green pasture that is gate of blessing mm. when i say blessing don't relate only to financial blessing or healing blessing in all areas of life mm. spiritual emotional physical family whatever you call it okay mm. that's the promise of the shepherd point number 4 okay and point number 5 he will feed the sheep mm. psalm 23 5 you mm. prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies mm. john 10:9 you will find pasture that is he nourishes when he say feed he nourishes a body mind and soul mm. then point number 6 he lays down his life for the sheep mm. john 10 11 i'm just summarizing everything so that we remember it point wise i am the good shepherd the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep mm. matthew 20 28 Mm. Just the son of God, man came not to be served, but to save and to give up his life as a ransom for many. That's point number six. Point number seven. What does the shepherd do? He appoints shepherds to take care of us. One mm. Peter five one and two. Now, as an elder, my son, a witness to the suffering of Christ, as well as who shares the glory to be revealed, I exhort the elders among you to tend the flock of God that is in your charge. God has given us in charge. He has appointed shepherds to take care of us. So, how many points, Jos? Jis, Jis, Jis. Seven. 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 Now, this is what the shepherd does. What has the sheep got to do now? Hmm. Sheep has also got to do, no? Right. Listen. <laughs> now, listen to the voice of the shepherd. Right. Most important is listen to the voice of the shepherd. Sheep have to got only two things, Jos. Wow. Shepherd is doing seven things. Sheep only two things. There could be more, but yeah. I've made it just two. First is listen to the voice of the shepherd. John ten three. He calls his own by name and leads them out. Revelation the, the sheep hear his voice. That's very important. Yeah. Revelation three twenty. Listen, I stand at the door knocking. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to you, eat with you, and you with me. So listening is very important. Right. Now the question is, how do we listen to the voice of the shepherd? Mm. How do we listen? Number one, to the word of God. Yes. First one is the word of God. Mm. Everybody knows that. I'm just giving you one, one on scripture for that. Isaiah thirty twenty one. And when you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a word behind you saying, "This is the way. Walk in it." Walk in it. That's yes. the primary way in which we can listen to the voice of the shepherd. Right. The second way how we can hear the voice of the shepherd. Joe, any idea? Sacraments. Through the tradition of the magisterial teachings of the church. Two Thessalonians chapter two verse fifteen. So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast to the tradition that you were taught by us, either by word or by mouth or by letter. Mm. The traditions of the magisterial teaching is also in listening to the voice of God. Here, here, uh, uh, you know, here the uh, tradition. While we talk about tradition, I wanted to talk about the capital T. Ah, uh, oh, yes, yeah. absolutely right. Yeah, it is not the small T. The small T uh, is very uh, cult, you know, uh, culturally oriented. It could be, it could be, uh, you know, to that particular uh, region or a country. Yeah, correct. You know, society. Uh, Uh, but then this is not what we are talking about in the gospel. This is the magisterial teaching. That's why I put a slash yeah. also. Correct. The magisterial the, teaching. The capital T of uh, the you know tradition that is very yes important. yes. And the third way we can listen to the voice of the shepherd is to 
voice was the pastor's voice. Mm. When I say pastor, the person who's in charge of you. Right. Acts 2.42. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, breaking of bread. Yeah, listening to the pastor's voice, who is your, your spiritual director, your parish priest, the shepherd itself, the bishop, the holy father, all that is very, very important. Hebrews 13, 17 also says it. Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over you, souls, and will give an account. Right. It was very important. Right. And the second thing that the sheep have to do is to obey. No, uh, okay, listening is obeying. What have the sheep to do? <laughs> Be united to the sheep phone. Yeah, listening is not obeying. <laughs> ah, okay, that's what I can say. Yeah, so no. today, 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 uh, in fact, I was I, I came across this beautiful verses in Psalm 119. In fact, I have tick marked, uh, tick, tick marked it, okay. There are a lot of verses in 119, Psalm 119, where uh, the psalmist say that I will, I will obey, I will obey the word of God. You know, with by saying, you know, it, it starts from verses 33. Teach me, Lord, the meaning of your laws. I will obey them all times. Explain your law to me, and I will obey it. I will keep it with all my heart. Keep me obedient to your commands, because I in them I find. So the entire, you know, at least around uh, 15, 20, 30 verses, which talks about the uh, obedience to it, obedience to the word. In fact, oh, this is a part. Uh, in fact, you should put that as another part. <laughs> <laughs> it's understood, actually. When I listen to it, I'm supposed to follow it. <laughs> so here, the problem is not about listening today. <laughs> the problem is that, you know, obeying, obeying to it. You know, yeah. especially the, in the, you know, people in the spiritual uh, journey, we have, we are so, you know, uh, as somebody, as somebody said, you know, somebody was called to preach. Uh, so the first day the preacher uh, preached uh, beautiful and it apparently it was in a convent and uh, everybody liked it. Uh, so the second day uh, he came and preached the same topic wow. and uh, people were wondering uh, why he did he preach the same topic. Third day he preached the same topic. <laughs> Fourth day, he preached the same topic. So then people really got re annoyed and said, Hi, why are you preaching the same topic? We wanted to hear something new. So this is exactly the problem. That is what you know the preacher was also trying to tell. We always wanted to hear something new. We don't want to do what we have heard and change, start living yeah. it. That is, a, that is a very important point, including me, because... Uh, uh, you know, sometimes we get to this, uh, what, what do you say, uh, spiritual gluttony. We wanted to hear the next talk of uh, this priest or this preacher. That is good. But then uh, when do we have the time to obey all this things and practice <laughs> in our lives? I think you should put that thing as a point, uh, Yeah, we'll include that. Uh, plus B. Plus B there. Plus B there, <laughs> yes. Yeah. You know, when you said this, uh, preaching again and again, there's a beautiful message of Charlie Chaplin. I do not know how many of you have heard this. Uh, you know, he came and, you know, as usual, he cracked some jokes and everybody laughed. Yeah. The next moment, again, another same joke he cracked. Yeah. And nobody laughed. Yeah. Then again, he cracked the same joke. So people asked him, why are you saying this? Why? And then he says, why didn't you laugh? Mm. So we heard it once and we laughed. How can you laugh for again and again? Yeah. Then he said, so if you cannot laugh the second time for the same joke, why are you crying over your same problem again and again? Correct. Correct. It's a beautiful message, you know? Yeah. It's a beautiful message of Charlie Chaplin. I remember reading it somewhere. Okay. Another point here is be united to the sheepfold. Yeah. Very important. Today, everybody wants to be their own. Hmm. It's just then I have other sheep that do not have to be together. Hmm. So staying in the sheepfold is very important. When we stray away, that's when we get injured, we get lost or whatever it is. Mm. So that's the sheep's responsibility. Hearing and doing the word of God. Okay, I'm making a little change there. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Prompted by Joe's, I'm bringing some change there. Yeah. Hearing and following the word of God. Okay, yeah. obeying the word of God. Very true. What you said is true. Okay. And then being united to the sheepfold. Right. So right. this is what is the relationship between the sheep and the shepherd. Correct. It's very important. If we can do that, 1 Peter 2.25 says, for you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and the guardian of your soul. Mm. So we need to be gathered in the sheepfold. And this, as a sheep, if I can do these two things, the rest of the thing, the shepherd is doing for me. 
So when I want the shepherd to do all the seven things or even more, what I have to do, we have to do what we have to do, then the Lord will do what he has to do. You know, pouring water into the jar is our job. Turning into wine is God's miracle. Removing the stone from Lazarus' tomb is our job. Raising up Lazarus is God's miracle. So when we do what we have to do, God will work his miracle in your life and my in fact, life. There, there, is a, that there is a role for us to play in the entire scheme of things that we even praying for. Jose, maybe we can have that as something. Every miracle that Jesus did, there was always a human effort before that. Correct. Correct. There's Every a role. Miracle. There is a role. Yeah, that role that's role, what I'm saying. Yeah, so that role is very uh, important for to identify. Important. Yeah. Because Without doing that, if I'm going to expect a miracle, it's not going to happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. There is a role. And that is where I, I, I really liked, uh, you know, that I liked... Uh, uh, this theory of uh, momentum, which I, you know, which we discussed, you know, some time back. Oh, uh, yes, yes. Uh, so there, uh, where there, you know, there's a beautiful, there's a beautiful uh, article, which, uh, you know, I read. I'm trying to, yeah, I'm just trying to read that, okay? It says, yeah, yeah. momentum is created. It does not rad randomly occur. And it requires our best effort. Mm. Right? Uh, yeah. And the momentum theorem focuses on the intensity over time multiplied by God creates unstoppable momentum. See that miracle part in comes in when we take that little step which we are supposed to be doing. That is very important that God could have just created, I'm just reminded about this you know, this multiplication of bread. He could have created this uh, fish from air no, and the bread if he could multiply so many. But he searched or he looked for that boy to give that five loaves and two fish. Yes, see, if he can change water into wine, he can even change an empty jar into wine. Correct, correct. He could do it, yeah. So there is a role, role which, uh, you know, each one has to play. That, 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 is, that has to be completed. That has to be done by us. That is what I feel. That is what I feel. And that's exactly condition supply. Condition supply. <laughs> we forget the conditions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Somewhere it's written the conditions apply. Right. Right, we right. don't look at the conditions and we want only the thing. And, right. and uh, we preach that also. Unfortunately, it's what is happening. No? Mm. We cannot blame the listeners. Mm. We as a preachers have made some mistakes somewhere. Right, right, right. Correct, correct. Yeah. yeah and we need to take the blame for that also. Yeah. That is where, that is where I find very useful uh, to pray for the spirit of counsel. Because the spirit of counsel is uh, the Holy Spirit's gift where the Holy Spirit uh, take us uh, to that direction in which we need to move. We need to move and uh, take steps on. You know, the Psalm, Psalmist says 38, uh, 2, I will teach you and guide you the way you should go and counsel you with my eyes upon you. Yeah. So the spirit of counsel, seeking the counsel of the Holy Spirit is very important uh, for us in that direction. It's what my experience, little experience and, uh, you know, based on the word of God, I wanted to share. Yes, that's what we uh, heard about the gifts and charisma I mentioned. Counsel yes. is the ways of God revealed by the Holy Spirit. God's Correct. ways are revealed by the Holy Spirit. Correct. And once we, understand that, once we understand that, moving in that uh, direction will really make our, uh, you know, I guess the journey uh, quick and uh, and fruitful. Fruitful, that's the right word to use it. No? That's yes. right, fruitful. Because everything that God wants you to do should bear fruit. Right, right. As Paul says in Romans, you know, he says, as you bear fruit in every good work you do. Right. Very important. Very important. Okay. So we'll wind up with, today with this. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We will wind up. Any questions uh, anybody has, uh, please ask now. <laughs> so we will, we are at 6.42. Any, any questions? Very nice. Very nice, Rishin, uh, Joe, Brother Joe's and uh, Raghu. Very nice, lovely session. Thank you. Trisa Daniel, okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Trisa. Uh, very nice, beautiful. A any any questions uh, you have? Any other questions uh, anybody has got? Jude? Uh, yes, brother. Uh, so while we were talking about the uh, writing our names in his palm, mm -hmm. you know, I remember reading somewhere that uh, you know, it is there in the Bible that the uh, slave masters uh, mm -hmm. used to write their names on the uh, slave hands. So, 
So that can you come back? Can you come again, June? I didn't yeah. hear you properly. The slave owner, the slave uh -huh. owners used to write their names uh -huh. on the palms of their slaves. Okay, so I don't know. Why, know why is it? A, why is? A, why do they write? That was to show that they belong to them. Okay, on on the on the slave's hand, you are saying. Uh, yes, yes. Okay, on the slave's hand. Okay, this is the other way around. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, so, so that it's again there, shows the ownership. Of, you know, I belong to. Uh, in the first few books, I I, I don't uh, remember where it is. It's there in the back. Mm -hmm. Okay, I also I don't remember. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this I remember reading somewhere that. Uh, so this has a reference to that particular uh, verse in the Bible, okay. that God, you know, He. It's not that uh, He owns us, that we own Him. So that is what uh, the message which I read in that. Particular, I don't remember where I read it. So this is quite some time back. Mm. Okay. So it's there. So we have to look at it from that angle also. So we have to. So we we own him, and not that you know we belong to us. He yeah, in, in like enough, maybe the right way to put is we own him. Um, you know, instead of that, we 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 belong to him. Yeah, there is this uh, beautiful. I mean, there is this uh, always this. Uh, you know, I think that Pope Francis also recently, uh, when he spoke uh, in the Charismatic uh, International meeting, he made a very, very uh, interesting statement. He said, uh, "You know, you guys don't control the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit control you." You know, mm -hmm. Charismatics have got this problem of uh, you know controlling the Holy Spirit. You know, we 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 say Holy Spirit does this, Holy Spirit does that. So you don't control the Holy Spirit, but Holy Spirit may Holy Spirit control you. So that uh, from that angle, from that angle, if you really look at what you said now, could be uh, could be interpreted in that way that uh, uh, you know while our our ownership uh, belongs to God to Jesus, and that is uh, would be the right. Uh, no, what that's what I think. Yeah, yeah, correct. Because when we say we own God, yeah. uh, it's 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 like taking a superior hand. You know, I'm not sure. Okay, maybe the I said maybe we belong to God, as he said. Maybe a better word. Anyway, that's that's only a point he made. Right, right, right. Okay, that's some reference to that. But I, I, I like uh, yeah. I like uh, that. Uh, you know, the you know the thing what we said about uh, being slave in on the hand of the slave, the owner's mm -hmm. name is written. That actually shows the ownership of. Both ways, you know, slave to say that I belong to this owner, mm -hmm. and also the owner say that this he belongs to me. It's a two-way relationship. Yeah. When you said about the controlling the Holy Spirit, yeah. I imagine suppose when we are preaching, charismatics are preaching, and the Holy Spirit is listening, sitting there and attending the retreat. <laughs> How do I, when did I say all these things? <laughs> <laughs> we use a lot of words which are uh, which are inappropriate. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That is true. Very true. Yeah. Okay. So let us let us close. Uh, any, yeah. any other questions? Nothing else, no? Yeah, nothing else. Okay. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time you have given us, Lord, to understand this beautiful relationship between the sheep and the shepherd. This Lord, many times you have strayed away from your flock, but you, the good shepherd, have always come looking for us, Lord. Today we pray that we receive the grace to be united to you always. Yes, Lord, we belong to you, Lord. We want to belong to you always, Lord. Give us the grace never to stray away from you, especially, Lord, to be sensitive to the voice of our shepherd, that is you, Lord. To the voice that you speak to us, sensitive to the word of God, sensitive to the promptings of the spirit, sensitive to the teachings of the church sensitive to the shepherds you have given us charge, given us to be under the charge of Lord. And also, Lord, to be united with your sheepfold so that as one flock, we may always glorify and follow you wherever you go. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Father, Son, and Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brothers and sisters. God bless you all. Bye-bye. Yeah. See you. Bye.